if anyone can already see me or is probably watching the VOD. Hello. Give me a minute while I mess with the settings. Okay, so on Twitch, I think we are live, but not on YouTube. Uh, because on YouTube... I don't know what is going on with YouTube. It's not getting my stream. Oh, there we go. Uh -huh. Okay. So, suddenly a bunch of people. Wow. More Sprite Fright. Yes. C no. Uh, actually, no. Sorry. <laughs> uh, today, I'm going to be rigging Snow's face. So on the previous stream, um, we rigged his body uh, for the most part. Since then, I've made some tweaks, uh, which I'll go over in a sec. Okay, so YouTube is functioning. Twitch seems to be functioning. And then I'm going to look at the restream chat and see if that's functioning. Uh, and it is question mark hmm. sorry guys technology is very difficult it's just how it is like why is it so difficult Why is our video title Sprite Fright on Ice when there is not what I set up? <sighs> Sorry guys, technical difficulties. I need to grab the title in the description from my last stream because I don't want to mislead people with Sprite Fright in the title because we are not doing Sprite Fright today. I am done with the Sprite Fright. No more. I rigged a Santa hat yesterday. That was it. All right. I'm joking. Holy moly. Can you see my confusion? Can you feel my confusion right now? That's because there is no way on YouTube to go from the studio to the actual live stream to see if it actually functions. Okay. We have a title, we have a description. If you have a question, it's probably answered in the description. So let's rig a face and let me know how the audio is. Um, okay, so the plan for today is this. We start putting down some face bones on Snow's face. Then we do some automatic weights and we try to move stuff around. And then maybe we do a little bit of um, action setups. Maybe. Probably. Yeah. Um, but the hard part is probably going to be figuring out where the bones go and it's going to be a bit slow because I also want to name things properly and um, the process is not as automated as like a, a one button press thing or not as automated as the body for example but anyways let's just get started how do we get started do we want to do eyes first or mouth first we could do ear but that's kind of a cop out because it's easy so I think we'll do, do something hard first which would be either the lips or the eyes well actually no those are easy so but they're important so let's start with the, those um, so I'm just gonna do a duplicate the head now 
I'm just gonna spawn a fresh bone here. Put it in the center by resetting the cursor and then scaling it to zero. What was this bone? Why is this not in the center? Whatever. And then there we go. That's our first face bone. And we would call that well. Maybe we should try to be consistent with the sprite fright names. Hmm. Yeah, I guess that wouldn't hurt. In that case, let me open another blender and quit some stuff. A uh, lots of stuff. And blender number two. to stream is still called Sprite Fight on Ice. It should be fixed, I hope. So if you still have the wrong title, refresh and let me know if it's fixed. People asking about hardware. <laughs> no, I'm not the right person. Do you climb? It's an oddly specific question. But yes, actually. Okay, so consistency with Sprite Fright. Let's see if I want that to be a goal or not. Maybe not. Maybe it's maybe consistency with rain would be make more sense. Yeah, and these sprite fright bone names are not my favorite to be honest. With the STRI prefix it's uh it's not very useful for the animator. Hmm. Let's see rain. GRP also not necessarily useful oh, and I just remember that rain had the uh, two lip um, bone loops if I remember correctly yeah she has like a, a top lip and uh, bottom of the top lip so it was kind of complicated and I'm not sure if that complexity is useful or necessary Okay, who has bigger lips, rain or snow? Uh, pretty similar, for sure. God damn it! How do I switch between two blenders? Hmm. Still, though, I think the animators would rather scale a single lip bone instead of like moving the top of the top lip towards the bottom of the top lip I feel like that's uh, less intuitive yeah okay I'll I will I mean this is gonna take a lot of trial and error but uh, for now let's try with just one set of bones for the lip which is the traditional way um, so not like rain and the next question is, do I want to start with bendy bones or just normal bones? Bendy bones, I think, worked really well for Sprite Fright. And they work okay on rain. But that's never to say that other options aren't worth considering. So I think there's going to be a lot of thinking and doing nothing and looking at old stuff in this stream because that's just how face rigging is for me it's never nothing is ever certain until you're done i think maybe i'm just not good enough to foresee everything but damn i do kind of like how rain's lips work to be honest Yeah, maybe not this part, like the fact that this upper lip affects the bottom of the lip quite a bit is maybe not so good, I would say. And that's, I think, kind of a side effect of the fact that the lowest level of control that I have here is not low enough because 
it's basically these blue controls. And if I move this, it just moves all these bendy bones that are all over the place. So even my lowest level control ends up affecting a lot of stuff. Hmm. I think for snow, I want to avoid that and do something else instead. This looks so complicated. Oh yeah, maybe I should I should stop scaring everyone with this nightmare because uh, here's the thing, guys. Most of this was not done by a human with its hands and brain and eyes. Um, I did a small part of this, and then there was a bunch of scripts that um, I mean, Rain was before before I had a fully procedural system so it was still a mess but it wasn't as much of a mess as the final result is so a lot of this was automated to some extent do I still have those scripts no or not? wait what is this no okay so anyways forget about rain let's look at snow see much less complex there you go eyeball eyeball and a single bone Okay, it's time to start doing something. I think I will start with the same approach as Sprite Fright for now, which is that the lips had bendy bones, the eyelids had bendy bones, and everything else did not. So this stuff is just a regular bone, and then regular bone, regular bone, regular bone, regular bone. And then those low level bones, um, the idea with the lowest level of control is that the animator ideally never has to touch it because they would have higher level controls that um, move a lot of these low level stuff in a in a nice way that always works. Um, always meaning that um, even when they move multiple of those higher level controls, even to extremes, the lower level guys will always conform to um, transforms that result in nice deformations, which is hard, but we will worry about that in the far future. But if I want the same bendy bone setup as I had on Sprite Fight, then I'm going to have the crappy bone names. No, I think I have, I have tech now. I have tech that should mean that I don't have to do that. So we could just call this lip top center. Yeah. Um, and what I will be able to maybe do, although this is going to be risky because I never tested this or I haven't tested it in a long time. But we have a cloud face, no, cloud chain anchor rig type. And then I can assign a cube shape to this with a secret add-on, which uh, I don't even know where this operator comes from. I think it's Mets tools, which I should put in the description. Let me read some comments. Is there a tutorial I could follow where it goes through detailed character face rig and also maybe into weight paint? Um, just keep watching, I guess. I don't really have a specific thing in mind, no, to be honest. Um, I'm sure it exists. Um, I just don't really seek out tutorials so much. Uh, I should, because then I could answer these questions, which are pretty common, so sorry. Um, how do you feel about bones versus shape keys for faces? That's a really good question. Um, I'm I currently prefer bones, but only because I'm I don't have a lot of experience with shape keys, and I'm I'm also not very happy with the the way that shape keys are evaluated in Blender and the way that shape keys are authored in Blender and the way that symmetry works with shape keys and sculpting and mirror modifier. So I have a lot of um, like tool related problems with shape keys, but I think result wise. Um, Shape keys are, they, in some cases, they can be totally necessary, especially if you're going for realism or so. Okay, we have placed one bone so far, and it's been uh, 20 minutes. So this is pretty good, I would say. This is highly above average uh, productivity for me. So let's try doing some more stuff here. Just roughly slap down some bones. We don't need to worry about the other side. We'll just symmetrize stuff over at the end. Uh, I want to snap this to that. And uh, how many lip bones am I going to have? Because I'm pretty sure Rain had quite a few. And the Sprite Sprite characters had a bit less. Uh, in terms of lip segments. 
So here, imagine that this will turn into a bendy bone, and so will this. And we would have a control here, and then we would have a control here, and we would have a control here. And that would be it. And the question is, is that enough? I think for now I will just go with this. And uh, if an animator asks for more, then I will have to redo some work. But I'm used to that, so it's fine. I do want to align the role of these lips, bo lip, bo lip controls to the direction of the of the mesh itself. So I'm just going to press Control R and roughly roll this to align it. Also, I want to isolate these bones because I don't care about the rest of the body. There we go. This guy as well. I don't know why this giant overlay is there, but seriously, that uh, that shouldn't be there. There we go. I don't know what that was. Don't worry about it. Um, how do you parent mesh? Control P. Hey, if it isn't my favorite rigger. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> do I climb ropes or boulders? Uh, mostly bouldering, but now everything closes at 5, so I didn't climb this week, which is very sad. But uh, on the weekend, me and Dalai are going to go climb for sure. Do I use a mouse or graphics tablet? I use a mouse for everything, even for weight painting. I think it's fine. I'd watch this, but I got school in 20 minutes and then lots and lots of spam, buddy. Oh boy. For, I, I don't think you'll be able to get uh, full on rigging tech support through a stream chat um, with complex questions like that, you're better off on a, on a forum. Because that uh, seems like it needs some investigation. Okay, so I have here a... What is this one called? I don't know. Lip top one. Mm, yeah, sure. Well, dot L. Top two dot L. Lip top center. Lip top dot L. Lip top corner dot L. Okay. Oops, these bone shapes are not intended. Some of them at least. Uh, the bone shape, there we go. These are fine. So then this guy wants to be a cloud face chain, which should work together with the chain anchor. So when I press generate rig, then in theory, um, these two bones are going to generate some bendy bones here. And in theory, these chain anchors are going to become the controls for those bendy bones. But I'm honestly uh, not too confident that it's going to work because um, I haven't tested this functionality in a long time. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, what else do I want? So I don't want these to be deforming. That's correct. Yeah. Smooth spline. I probably don't want that now. Okay, then well, let's just hit it. Let's just see if we can get a lower, an upper lip without uh, without errors. Probably not. Uh, I should have a console here because this can be slow nowadays for some reason. Yep, very slow. I should fix that as well. I have some major bottleneck in the beginning of the generation. You see, for 16 seconds, it's doing the duplicate rig. Um, process and then in two seconds it generates the rest of the rig so that's not ideal but hey let's see so we have some bandy bones that work and sh damn it 
Okay, so the anchors don't work. Surprise, surprise. I think I will fix them later because for now I can do a little workaround. Perhaps. Well, actually, for now I don't really care. For now I just want to place the bones and um, do some weight painting in a bit. Or, well, automatic weights. So let's do the bottom lip. We want to keep this guy in the center. So SX0. Whoa. Globally, 0. There we go. Is it 0? It is not 0, actually. Because even the previous one I did not center correctly, I think. Eh? Oh no, I'm looking at the wrong number. I was looking at this, but this is what I want, which is zero, so it's fine. Okay, let's try to place this roughly in the center of the mass of the lip. Something like that. And like that, but when these exact positions we can tweak when we have some weights, and I would probably um, judge that based on how it behaves when I rotate it on on this axis. Because the rest of the axis don't care as much, I would say. But of course, they are also important. Okay, and then this one is the trickiest to place because we want it to be at the bottom of this very small space for best effect when when the character's mouth opens. Um, yeah, this is always going to need adjustment anyways because in order to open the lips we want to turn this very sharp edge into a very smooth edge. So this needs to be very precise and specific. Um, but that's fine. Okay, and this is going to be called lip bot one dot l and lip bot two dot l. Then we duplicate these guys who are not going to do anything for a bit, but later they will. Uh, I should probably have used better name for this. I really, really should have. But now here we are. Lip bot dot l. Lip bot center. Okay, question. Why not have a ready-made rig for a face like that available for reify? Uh, yeah, I could just bring over the Sintel rig that I have lying around, but the reason I don't have such a thing is because I never made one. Um, the rig that we are making now might be reused in the future. So I have this, but what I want to do now is totally different from this in terms of structure. So I'm not using it. And the stuff in Sprite Fright is also uh, very different in structure because those rigs are they are too specific and there was a lot of manual tweaking done on them. So I want to avoid that and keep it a bit simpler here. Okay, so we have some lips. And let's start throwing down some more random bones, pretty much. Whoa. Random in the sense that it's so hard to judge where they should be um, that I just accept that there is going to be a bunch of iteration until I figure out the correct spots for the bones. And uh, for this rig, for the cheeks and stuff, for the areas that aren't circles, like the eyelids and the lips, I want to not spare the number of bones. So I think I'm going to have quite a lot. Um, because there's not too much reason not to. I mean, yeah, you're better off because with fewer bones, you have uh, you have control over not as small areas. So it's just whenever you run into combinations of crazy extreme poses, you just sometimes can't control a small enough area without messing up another area. So for this one, I'm just going to go with a lot of bones. Why not? The automatic weighting might be better off as well. 
Okay, so I'll have one here that is like sort of in between the lip and the nose, I think. Yeah. And then we will have one right next to it for the bottom of the nose. What should this be called though? Like lip top. Mm, lip above, nah. Well, this is gonna be a sort of a ring like this, but it doesn't really help with the naming. Whatever, this can be called nose base, I guess. And this can be, I mean, lip nose <laughs> and center. I'm okay with that. You can't name every bone perfectly. Um, okay, and then we need nostrils. And so, for example, a good question is do we just want a single bone for this entire area? Or perhaps several, for some reason. Hmm. For now, I guess let's just go with... Hmm. Honestly, I think two would not hurt. So I would go with a nostril lower the L and then a nostril upper the L. And yeah, this uh, this is going to be a pretty boring process, I'm not going to lie to you. Until we get a bunch of bones in place. But hey, such is life. Nose tip one. And th th putting center in the name is kind of redundant, to be honest. Because as soon as you can see that there's no dot L or dot R at the name. Mm. Yeah, that's true, but at least maybe explicit is better than implicit, yeah? I guess. Some wise guy said that once. So why not? Let's see comments. So does Blender Studio teach all this? I'm deciding between CG Cookie and Blender Studio. Well, I don't know what CG Cookie offers. Um, this stuff, I would say, I mean, we have um, the CloudRig uh, tutorial series that went live yesterday. I think we didn't tweet about it yet. So uh, there you go. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, if you want to learn to rig specifically the way that I do, um, then the studio subscription will probably get you the closest to that um, with the Cloudrix series. But yeah, that's uh, it's pretty advanced. Basically, it's it's not um, it's not super beginner focused, I would say. And the and the CG cookie might be more beginner friendly. How much time do you have to spend for full rigging of a character like this? Long. Because, I mean, the initial rigging is uh, maybe not too bad, like maybe uh, less than a week. But then the iteration and uh, like the all the feedback um, and making it actually good, that can take a lot of hours. Yeah, CG Cookie is better for teaching Blender Studio is more behind the scenes and access to assets from their films. I would say that's a very good point. That's exactly the main difference. I mean, we also have uh, educational content, but um, in theory, our focus is more making movies. Are you working on voxel-based weight painting? No. Will the face weight painting process become way more complex in CloudRig? I don't think so. No, I think weight painting is always complex and a pain. So there's not much of a way to make it even worse, you know? How many vertex for this object? For the head, apparently under 10k.
Are we using Windows? No, we are on Linux because we only use open source software. All right, back to boring stuff. How many nose bones? This is the great question. Maybe not that many, even though I just said I would make more bones than usual. Hmm. I'll tell you what, the, the nose doesn't move that much, usually. Um. But when it does move, it's mostly this area, I guess. So to facilitate that, well, Rain has like a pretty fancy nose setup, like this. Hmm. And then the teeth start poking through, but. Now I have technology to avoid that. Should have used it on rain. Oh well, maybe I'll update her sometime. Sometime. Hmm. Do I want this tech for snow? I don't think it's ever used. This is used for sure. The the sneering. But this thing. It might be more trouble than it's worth. You know what I mean. I guess you can do something like this with it. Silly teeth clipping all over the place, come on. Ah, that's kind of fun, I guess. Yeah, maybe we should go for this. Uh, okay, if I do that, that makes life difficult though. Hmm. But it is super fun. Look at it. Oh, scaling doesn't work. Terrible rig. Zero out of ten. Hmm. But well, for that stuff to work, this is not really necessary. And I don't think this behaves in a, as good of a way as it could because look how it affects a lot of surrounding area which you wouldn't necessarily expect hmm. yeah, there's this stuff which does nice squashing so this is actually pretty nice but again, it's never really used. Like this part of the face doesn't really move. This does. And this could certainly behave a lot better. It's creating all kinds of strange um, crevices and bulges. So, what I am going to do is probably going to be a complicated setup in the end, but for now, all we worry about is deformation. Let's just have a big bone here in the middle. That will just be the tip of his nose, and we just call it nose tip. That's it. And then we'll have a nose bridge, maybe several nose bridge bones, just to hold weights, really even if they will never move. Like so. And then, well, okay. So this is potentially tricky. So what we need, what I can foresee, is that this forehead center bone 
is gonna be posed way down by the animators when when this character is doing like an angry expression. So if this bone needs to be able to be posed way hella down, then we might need more bones here because we are not using bendy bones. If this was a bendy bone connection here, the bendy bone would squash together, which is good because then it would also distribute these edges evenly. Um, but if you want to distribute edges evenly between two bones, well, it can be done. It just might be a bit finicky in terms of weight painting, but basically I'm contemplating putting one more bone here. And yeah, I think just to be on the safe side, this time I will uh, stick to what I said in the beginning and have more bones rather than fewer. Even if it means like having a bone for every second edge loop, which is still not even the case. So it's fine. We're fine. So this can be nose bridge three. And this is going to be eyebrows center, I suppose. And then as we go higher, the same with this bone is true for going up. The animators will want to push it super far up, potentially. So I want to have... So this will be the, the topmost bone, and we want to have enough stuff in between so that we can squash this <coughs> in a clean way without relying too much on corrective smooth, etc. So... Yeah, let's just have lots of bones. We'll see what it's like. So I am putting down more bones than I usually do, which is just a bit of an experiment, you know. <coughs> I want to try new things, see what works best. Maybe this will not work at all. And then I will have learned something. I don't know if we have the time for such things, but uh, I'll find out when it's too late. That's fine. Say you're working with animal, where would you apply the bendy bones? Well, if it's a cat, then everywhere. If it's a tortoise, then not on the shell. I don't know. Um, the bird on Sprite Fright had bendy bones in its wings and, well, everywhere else because it's Sprite Fright. I mean, if it's a cartoon animal, put bendy bones everywhere. Whatever. Um, yeah. I mean, like, if you have straight things to rig, then just always use bendy bones. Why not, you know? You can <coughs> just not make them bendy. As an animator, I mean. But you can always have the option. You don't lose anything. With a face, the problem is that if you make a bendy bone grid, it, like, I don't know. Bendy bones can squash, which is great. But they also do the whole curvy thing which is not necessarily great for things that aren't straight or circular. So that's why I am trying to do this one without bendy bones. Even though, like, I managed to make it work on rain to an extent that a lot of people are happy with. But, eh. It took more work than it should have. And <coughs> I think it could be better. So yeah. But maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. All right, did I name all of these? No, I did not. So this would be forehead center one. <coughs> I need to make up my mind if I'm gonna put center in the name or not because I should be consistent with that. So for the forehead I did just now. <coughs> and I kept it for the lips as well. Then yeah, I guess center bones will have center in the name even if it is a bit redundant. 
whatever. Not the end of the world. Okay, let's do some eyebrows. Those are easy. Eyebrow one dot L. And the animators tend to want a lot of eyebrow bones, but now we're doing a lot of everything bones, so whatever. Honestly, okay, how many edge loops do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Give or take. Well, that is a lot, in a sense. In the sense that I don't really want to have eight bones for the eyebrow. So for a sprite sprite, we had, I think, five. And I think Rain has four. Yes. Um, okay, you know what? Let me let me open a third blender, which is the norm. You should always have at least three blenders open. And let's look at Ellie and double check that I'm not lying about the five eyebrow bones. Yeah, so we have one, two, three, four, five, but um, every odd number, one, uh, every, every even number um, is constrained to stay between the odd numbered ones. Huh, yeah, I feel like this is kind of cool. I should do the same thing with snow. And for rain, how did this thing work? Um, this is what was used. I want the eyebrows also have these double loops going on. Um, like uh, each eyebrow, because they're quite thick, they have two, they, they have like a whole pentibone canvas surrounding them, which is kind of crazy. And I'm not sure that it, it provides the rig with much benefit, to be honest. Like, I think rotating the eyebrows becomes kind of unpredictable because of it. Eh, I guess I mitigated it, but I remember it being a headache. Like, yeah, there you go. I would say this is kind of weird rotation. But it only gets weird when you, when, you, when you put it pretty extreme. So still, it was way more work than it has to be. And uh, Snow's eyebrows are less thick. So, I think five is a good number. Then we one here, two, three, crap. Five is not a good number at all, guys. Eight edge loops, four eyebrow bones. It makes too much sense. It just makes way too much sense. So that's what we do. And it will be consistent with rain. And yeah, people didn't complain that much about rain's eyebrows, I think. So it should be fine. Um, and I do believe I want to make these bones directions align with the direction that the eyebrow will move in most commonly, which means actually bending them a little bit, maybe downwards, but maybe not because I mean, I know eyebrows are weird. Um, yeah, I will bend it a little bit forward like this. Tiny, tiny bit, like three degrees or something. Just so when the animator presses G and Y or grabs the local Y axis with their gizmo, the eyebrow will go a little bit inwards. Um, which also means it's gonna go a little bit outwards when they push it up, which is not so good. Um, but I, th I just, I'm basically just choosing to favor the making the eyebrows easy to use for downwards motion. And at the end of the day, um, I might have an action based setup here anyways so that the animators don't necessarily have to touch these <coughs> controls as often. Maybe I should talk less, because I'm gonna need way more water, because holy moly, my throat is getting dry. God damn. More dry than usual. And I'm out of water, so I'm gonna need a, a break at some point to grab more. <coughs> or I could have a lovely coworker who is listening <laughs> God damn. Bring me a glass of water. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, let me reach for a bit. This thing doesn't work at all. Thanks, David, for the chat cleanup. Jesus, are 
Are there two or three people here? Guys, I'm not I'm not Rick. I'm not animating. You're not gonna get entertainment here. I'm just literally in the last fifty minutes I put down some bones. Do I hear a glass of water? A glass of water approaching. If it isn't my favorite <laughs> coworker. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh my god. Thank you, Yulin. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Mm. Stay hydrated, guys. Do you rig the eyelids with two bones or multiple? Uh, two bones. Well, f uh, as far as the animator will be concerned, yes, there will be two main bones for sure. So on the rain, that was not that one, not that one, um, not that one either. This one, <laughs> and then this one, I guess. So yes, there will be these two bones to control the eyelids, and you can also do the twisty thing. The same is planned for snow, because this eyelid rig has been um, serving us well since rain. Um, damn, actually, it works pretty nicely on rain. Um, so yes, in that sense, it will be two bones, but uh, under the hood, no. Not two bones, not at all, my guy. So depending on uh, which way you mean it, yes or no, can both be the answer. Okay, let's name some bones. Exciting. Eyebrow to the L. Eyebrow three the L. Eyebrow four the L. Wow! Now this is quality entertainment. We are increasing numbers. Don't human brains just love increasing numbers? Am I right, fellow human brains? Okay. Mm. This is fine. And I would say we will do the forehead stuff later. This stuff later. The ears will be easy. But for now, let's do eyelids. I'll just grab these bones to start with. And let's think about how we want these eyelids to deform. And the answer is kind of the same as every other character that I looked for the studio so far, minus Settlers, which is a bunch of bendy bones, for the top, a bunch of bendy bones for the bottom. And the animators will never see what's going on. All they will see is that it just works. I think I might have messed up the location of some objects here, maybe. Let me check. Uh, let's open Blender number four. There we go. I want to check on um, on Snow before I messed him up with my rigging attempts, how his eyes looked. I'm in the wrong place. I'm in completely the wrong place. Uh, where is the SVN home guest? No, home. Media, 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 media. It's a media. Media. Data. The thing. Uh -huh. Lib. Snow. I need to add this to a bookmark. Oops. Not a new folder. <laughs> oh well. Uh, whatever. Uh, bookmark. There we go. I know technology. And I think Snow the Blend is what we had before I destroyed it. <laughs> okay, it's the same. Yeah, this is fine. I did not break anything. So we'll just keep going. And this will be eyelid upper. Wait, which direction? Mm. Meh. 
doesn't matter. 1.l. Wait, well, I guess... Hmm. I guess let's try to be consistent with rain. So, yeah, this is how she was. So her number one is the outermost eyelid. Consistency is key, guys. Why? I don't know. But it is. Trust me. Number three and number four. Okay, so this does not look ideal yet, I know. We will tweak it. And this is going to be the opposite problem of the mouth, where we have this smooth circular shape. And when the eyes close, we need to turn those corners into sharp corners. So again, these, um, the beginning and end of this chain and the whole thing, I mean, um, tends to require a lot of trial and error, moving things around by a few millimeters. Um, and also, in my experience, they tend to cross each other for best results, but uh, maybe I'm just crazy, but maybe this is too much. Meh. And of course, let's try to put them on an edge loop so that when we're painting, it will be clear um, which bone should deform which vertices. is fine and then this I would also bring a bit below that edge loop just cause I mean basically just in the same spot as the edge loop okay and actually probably closer to the edge I wish it was smaller but I mean, this this sphere was smaller because it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing. Okay. There's our upper eyelid. Then let's make a lower eyelid. Bloop. Oh, yikes. But I have bounding blocks, come on. Beautiful. Ah, this time I will use better name. Uh, what is that? Control F2. Bones. Find. Upper. Replace with lower. Bam. And then find dot zero zero one. Replace with nothing. Bam. There you go. Efficient bone renaming. Uh, we will have to do a pass, by the way, at some point on all the the bone rolls, um, which is you know this stuff because it matters, kind of, um, or at least it. Even if it doesn't matter a whole lot, it's nice to get it right early because once you start putting down keyframes for actions, there's no going back. Since if you change the bone roll after that, then you have to redo your actions. So that's something to keep in mind. Mm. Meh. Good enough. Good enough. on the edge loop and then this guy so I will push it just a little bit above it and so you can imagine by the way when we generate controls for this stuff like these two are going to be very close to each other which is super annoying um, and yes it is but ideally again the animators don't have to deal with that only me when I'm creating the actions and I just deal with it Oh, but we also have, uh, you know, alt 
uh, Alt uh, click now to uh, select overlapping bones thanks to Sebastian so that's super nice D unless you misclick <laughs> Okay, so I will give these some b consistent bone roll at least. Not sure which of these would be best. Eh, that looks good enough. Um, okay. Now we have eyebrows, lips, eyelids. Now, the stuff in between. So here's things that we need to be able to do as a human. You need to be able to smile and ideally create a laugh line wrinkle on your face. Um, something else you need to be able to do is do a cheek puff as if you are, you know, blowing air into your mouth, but your lips are closed, which is actually super easy. And we're not going to worry about that at all, because now I started using lattice uh, modifier for that, which makes it so trivial that it's ridiculous. So that's going to be no problem at all and I'm not even gonna worry about cheek puff and stuff uh, which is great because for rain it was uh, that was a huge headache because I didn't know any better so if you also don't know any better and you worry about cheek puff when you place your facial bones well uh, watch probably the next stream because I don't think I'll get there uh, today but yeah just put a lettuce here and just do whatever you want with it no need for a uh, crazy specific bone structure um, also, so left line, yes, important. Uh, sneer, um, which is also kind of the same thing. That line appears on the cheek here. Um, and then you want the eyebrow wrinkling, which is probably gonna be a shape key. So we don't need to worry too much about that. But what we do need to worry about is the fact that this whole area can squash and squanch and crush a whole lot. Um, so yeah, we will probably need a bunch of bones here and here and stuff. And then of course you have this area above the eyelids, um, which is just kind of nice to be able to, well, the reason you want to move that is not necessarily for the most realistic expressions, but when animators want to push these eyebrows down, I have found out that they want to push them down a whole lot. Like this eyebrow is going to be pushed down. <laughs> I don't know why my drawing is very uh, inaccurate. I think mass acceleration is on. So these eyebrows are going to come down like here, which is uh, maybe even more, which is kind of far because even if you blink, even if you cause the the eyelids to, to blink during that, and you bring them down here, there's all this geometry, all of this stuff that has to, well, ideally has to move down along with the eyebrow which is fine as long as you have a control that controls that area, um, which is just this uh, area between the eyelids and the eyebrows. So we'll put a bunch of bones there. And then this temple stuff, I would say is not super important. Like this doesn't really deform, uh, but I just have a bunch of bones there because why not? Um, ears is easy because it's far from everything else. And the jaw. No, not the jaw. Forget the jaw. The lips. The lips need to stretch so far, man. Like so far. Okay, maybe not so far for snow as for Rex, which was ridiculous, or for Phil, which was ridiculous, but still far. So we want these lips to be able to come like, I mean, okay, like, okay, this is pretty far. And I don't think it would ever be pushed this far, but we want to make sure that, uh, that the rig is good enough to handle it, right? Like, how far can Rain go? Let's see. Or, how, yeah, how far can Ellie go? Oh, boy. I don't know why there's a piece of her... Uh, oh. Oh, because uh, the sprite for Svin is not updated, so this wasn't fixed yet. Ignore, ignore. So, yeah, as you see, Ellie's lips go incredibly, incredibly far. Like, her uh, lips um, can sextuple in length, um, which is, of course, horrifying, and you would never do that. I hope. Jesus. But uh, you can. And the reason this is useful is because in certain camera angles, you don't realize how horrifying it is. Maybe. <laughs> Anyways, uh, maybe I'm not visualizing it in the best way, but I hope you get my point. Uh, but I still want to look at the rain. 
Oh boy, yeah, it really is complicated now that I look at it. Uh, and she has a lip control, which is just a freaking cube. Damn, I had no standards back then. Huh, and her lips kind of break. That shouldn't happen. Uh, interesting, anyways. Hmm, I think this might have been broken because of the action constraint update. Interesting. I should probably fix that. But this is also not the latest version of Rain, but even then, it, uh, it breaks a lot more than I would expect. Whatever. Whatever. Um, point is, this is how far Rain's lips can go, which is actually pretty surprisingly far. Oh wait, now her lips... Okay, so I have like this in and out thing. Interesting. Eh, anyways. So she has this whole mess moving out of the way of the lips. And that's the hardest thing ever. And so that is what I want to think about right now. Of how do I want to do this for snow? How many bones do I put down? Where and why? In order to be able to push the lips pretty far. You know, I would describe it as pretty far. Of course, if this was some even crazier design or you want, you have a very specific art direction, then you might want to push it twice as far and just have the lips uh, hit the midline of the eyeballs. But please, just do 2D in that case. So, we want those lips to go at least to, what, the bottom of the nose, I guess? Yeah. Yeah, the bottom of the nose and the far corner of the eyeball. Let's put that as our as our guideline, as our uh, goal. So we want it to go, we want the lip corners to push all the way up here. We need all this geometry to move out of the way when we do that. So that, you know, the cheek goes up here, gets all uh, puffy and stuff. And yeah, like this whole thing will become this nice volume. <coughs> but, that volume will be created out of this geometry. And I think I'm just gonna... Well, hmm, let's see. I'm just gonna have a lot of bones. I think that's the answer. Which is what I was planning to do already. So it's fine. So I'm looking at... Maybe one there. But no, that's, that's not enough. More. So this guy is here. We put one here. One here. One here. There. 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 That much is kind of clear. And then here we have some options. And I said I would make it more dense than before. So I think that means that I put a bone there, there. Hmm. Is this going to be enough? I don't think so. Maybe we do something like this. That's a lot of bones. I know. But that's the idea. We spare no expense. I should look at the chat. I haven't done that in a while. Not there. Well, the chin is, uh, is super unique, actually. It's the strongest chin ever. Damn! 
You can kill a man with that. Huh. Interesting. I don't think that means much for me in terms of deformation. I think when you push the lips down, like... I guess the chin does squash down a bit, but only like the the top of it. So I would probably have a bone here and there and here. And then for the jaw, these are mostly going to be just uh, to hold weight. So these are not really going to deform. But still something like that and this. You can have one for his chin volume here on this edge. Maybe that's... No, nah, nah, not on the edge, on the vert. Yeah, that's better. Hmm. Is this too many bones? Man, it really feels like too many bones, but I think that's what I gotta force myself to do, to experiment with what I want to experiment, which is, again, a lot of bones. I gotta keep telling myself, lots of bones. More bone, more good, yes? Okay, I'm trying to read chat. Let's see, I have to go back quite a lot. How do you do shoulders? I feel like they are the face. Uh, I don't do anything too complicated, I guess, but maybe I should. I mean, yeah, you can see this is not great. Um, but I don't have like super detailed deformations on this body yet. No shape keys, no nothing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would say just uh, put some shape keys. Um, in the in the shape key drivers, you can use the. I can recommend looking up the. Um, what is it called? The the swing and Y twist um, way of reading rotations, because that way of reading rotations is, um, like pretty much uh, it's, it's designed for um, shape key activation. So like you can read the rotation of this bone. Okay, maybe not that one in this case, but uh, technically, <laughs> in theory, you could um, to find out how much this bone is being bent towards a certain axis, and the swing and white twi twist method of of uh, reading that value is uh, is is going to be is going to give you the best results for activating corrective shift keys, and then you just sculpt them, and then you hope for the best. That's my best shoulder advice. Um, more comments. <laughs> do you reuse rigs for characters or do you guys always do it from scratch? Um, we do it from s scratch, but of course we, we, we generate most of the rig with, uh, with Python. So in that sense, it's all reused. But to like, yeah, so it depends on your definition of reuse because like to really reuse, it would just be copy paste and uh, that for that to work, you would have to fit the character proportions, of course. I always end having to make corrective shape keys. Don't don't worry about having to make corrective shape keys, man. That's just how it that's just how it is. Couldn't you solve something like that without bendy bones, but spend more time in waste painting? Not sure what it's referring to, but if it's shoulders, I don't think so. I mean, you can also use helper bones instead of bendy bone uh, instead of shape keys. But with helper bones, I think they are a lot more hassle to set up, and also scale inheritance goes out the window with them. Do I need the drawing ability to create? this things i can't draw a stick figure my guy so i guess not i wish i could though and i can model stuff so 
You can definitely draw without knowing how to model. Wait, the other way around. You can definitely model without drawing, fuck, without knowing how to draw. Two D and three D are completely different. Eh, I don't know about that. Drawing would probably be helpful for me as well. Struggling with rigging. I'm struggling with rigging for a class project, and I don't know if I can parent an object to two different objects. Um, you can parent them half and half um, with copy transforms constraint on uh, 0 0.5 influence on the second one, and one influence on the first one. Or if you want double parenting, you can use child of twice, but I don't think that's what you want. Uh, child of constraint, that is. Why don't you use PowerPoint for <laughs> <laughs> a character? Very good question. Uh, because PowerPoint is not open source, that's why. When will the tutorial come for the cloud rig? Uh, yesterday. It's already at the cloud rig um, video series is now available on the Blender Studio website, studio.blender.org. All right, I think I've reached the bottom of chat. Back to thinking and drawing blue lines on a face, which is, I know it looks very pointless, but um, <coughs> it helps me and my brain to pre-visualize what I want to do. Because like, for example, look at these three bones. They seem so awkward now. Because when I move this one up, for example, which I don't know why you would do because it's the jaw. But if you did, then it would have this weird offset uh, uh, fall off to the next bone. So I would be tempted to put this here instead and then not have this, right? But then you have this whole area here, which now doesn't have a bone at all. So that is why I am messing around here. So maybe I would put one here instead which kind of solves those problems, but then it creates issues, this similar issue here, but maybe here it's not so bad. So there you go, that's what I'm doing right now. Um, so yeah, when this lip, this lip corner will also have to come downwards and squash. Well, okay, this, the squashing part is kind of a cartoony effect, um, but still. We still want to support that, I guess. So if it's trying to do that, we have this bone to help move this vertex out of the way and this one and these ones to bring this part of the cheek down along with the corner, which is fine. And then this can squash to the side, which is fine. And this can squash to the, well, yeah. Yeah, so this can squash to the side and this will hold the chin in place, which is maybe what we want. Uh, I'm not sure. Hmm. Okay, this is fine. This is fine. Then we can maybe do some more jaw stuff here. I mean, I could, I could push the jaws, the jaw bones, one loop down. It, it doesn't really matter that much since these usually will stay in a line anyways. Um, 
even for cartoony effects, I don't think there's that much that you want to do with curving the jaw, I guess. I mean, maybe there's something. But anyways, so that's not too important for me right now. What is important is when the slip corner comes out here. <laughs> yes, just like that. Then I need... I need these two areas, the lower cheek and the upper cheek, to cooperate and to go in different directions. And for the, the, the lower cheek, of course, needs to stay... I mean, it's it's kind of obvious, but I will just state obvious things because I'm thinking. It needs to stay underneath um, the lip corner and the upper cheek needs to stay above the lip corner. and because of that, I am willing to justify having a bone here, and a bone here, and a bone here, and a bone here. Even though these are super close to each other, like ridiculously close, as in they are just separated by zero vertices. I think it might still make sense to have them. Because when I'm creating the action to pull the lips this wide, I will need so much control over these vertices that I might as well just have a ton of bones for them. And we'll see how it goes, I guess. If it's a disaster, it's a lesson learned. These are fine. For this later area, I don't need as much control, I guess. So this is fine. Uh, do I want to one here? Nah. Maybe. It feels kind of awkward to leave this out. I'll leave it there for now. Okay, so I think this is how I would distribute the stuff on the chin, uh, the cheek. And then for the ch upper cheek. We want to be able to bump this uh, fleshy, fleshy outwards when the lip is pushed up, which is fine. And I don't think we need a ridiculous amount of control for that like this. So maybe I'll leave two vertices between each bone like this. And then we are coincidentally also building this uh, outer ring thing here. Then we can have one here, which will ideally help with the um, the laugh line. Which, by the way, if you look closely, I believe that pushing this uh, column of bones and this column of bones together is possibly what's going to help us create this laugh line here, which is good. And there might also be a shape key involved um, just to push these row of vertices inwards which is fine I suppose and then if I wanted I could do that with bones as well and then just have like bones here and here and friggin every single vertex is a bone but nah I think we'll do that with a shape key because it's like such a small and simple movement of vertices that I think a shape key will be just fine. Okay, so fleshy, fleshy. So our eyelid is running there. Maybe before I do the rest of the stuff, I will uh, figure out the outer eyelid bones because those should be kind of straightforward. I mean, we want them to roughly line up with the with the eyelid, of course. So like this. Well, this one might not even need to exist, really. I don't think it would bring much benefit. Yeah, 
So also another way to think of the purpose of these bones that are going to be on the outer eyelid is that they take the weights of the eyelid itself when when the character blinks. You know, some bone has to hold the weight that's holding the eyelid back. And that can be just the head bone. Yeah, you can just rig everything to the head bone. Um, but I like to have, you know, these small bones that uh, let you move everything. So I, I like to have nothing rigged to the head except the back of the head, like the skull that literally never moves. Because then you get more options. You get the control that you need. Insane amounts of control is what we need. Okay, so one more here. And here I'm kind of sad that this area is maybe kind of long without a bone. It's a bit of a wasteland without control. But I think I will live, live with it because it's just the outer eyelid, you know? It doesn't have that much of a job to do. Then we can have one of those here. Okay, so which edge loop am I on? Am I on this one? Nah, no I'm not. So if I wanna stick to this edge loop, ideally, Then that would go there. And then there would be one here. And you see now there is a misalignment um, between these two bones. And I want to fix that. And I think the cheek will win and the outer eyelid will lose, meaning that the outer eyelid will come forth, com com comfort? Yeah, comfort to the cheek. So it's going to come here and it doesn't align with this eyelid one anymore, but I think that's less important because again, this outer eyelid, all it has to do to make the blink work is to do nothing, which is easy enough. Whereas when the cheek is pushed up, this eyelid stuff is also gonna have to move up. And I think this way it's gonna be better, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, I'm okay with this. And then one here-ish, and that's it. And then we could have more for this area. Then maybe I should, even though, again, never gonna be used, never gonna move. Maybe it's still good to have. Because we want to have a lot of bones. This looks like a lot of bones. <laughs> God damn. This is quite significantly more than I would have placed in the past. But but that's the thing, the, in, in my past rigs, I often feel like I don't have enough control and to get the right shapes is just harder than it should be. So, lots of bones, keep telling myself. Lots of bones is good. And if I follow this mantra, we put some bones here. even though they will do nothing. This is fine. So I think these loops will belong to the eyebrows though. Yeah, so the, the eyebrows are gonna have a pretty big influence, which is fine. Because I don't need control here. I uh, Even in past characters, like underneath the eyebrow, I think at 
least there wasn't that much stuff going on look this whole area there's nothing here until the outer eyelid and I think that's fine jeez <laughs> how did I read this thing <laughs> so much stuff going on Jesus Christ anyways don't look at that don't be terrified guys look at Ellie Ellie's chill Well, Ellie's, uh, it's so, it's so interesting to switch between Rain and Ellie. Even though, like, you know, Rain is not a hyper-realistic character, by any means. But the simplified shapes of Ellie still, uh, are such a huge difference. But, still, the principles apply. Um, just eyebrow, outer eyelid, and happiness. So I stick to that. So, eyebrow, outer eyelid, happiness. And then a bone here. And then a bone, not there. Maybe there. Sh shoot. Okay. What is the job of this area? It is to collapse when the animators pull the eyebrows down into oblivion. So, I think to do that, I do need the control here. Not a control, uh, well, uh, a deformer there. <laughs> Rain's face gets such a weird and complicated setup to keep the curve of every adjacent people in line with each other. <laughs> Dude, the face setup of Rain is so ridiculous. Like, for anyone who doesn't know, like, consider the fact that she has a set of bones here that do stuff, that don't move with the rig, but they just do math. And they don't even do good math. <laughs> they, they just do, like, mediocre math. So when you rotate this thing, nothing even happens. Something is supposed to happen. Wait. Oh, my God. These arrows upon arrows upon arrows. There you go. So you rotate this. And then through this, it propagates the rotation to those arrows, which then drive the curvature of the B-bones. I don't know what was the purpose of this anymore. I read this like uh, two years ago. Um, I know it's not needed anymore because, 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 um, now there's the, um, what do we have? So for, oh boy. Um, the copy rotation, copy rotation. So for this guy, we have the custom space, and that's pretty much what this setup tried to recreate, and it did it poorly. Um, this was such a waste of time. I mean, I don't know, it worked, and it allows you to. So here's what it does. This is a this is a tangent. I'm going on a tangent. But don't worry about it. And that word tangent is gonna come back. Because look, you move these move you move this thing and this bendy bone moves. Which now I say is a bad thing. But back then this was the goal. Because I was stupid. And here's the thing. If you rotate this, it rotates. And you can't normally do these two things at the same time. Um and then yeah, so you would normally get this stuff by setting the bendy bone handles to automatic um, but what I did instead is have uh, damped, ta damped track constraints between each of these things like every bone and the neighbor um, and then I want to take the rotation from the damped track bone and put it into uh, the bone that the bendy bone takes its curvature from and then on top of that this is all I want to do. Add the rotation on top of this. That's all I wanted to do. And after way too long of a time of not realizing that I am going down a rabbit hole, I ended up with this madness, which by the way works, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> it doesn't work good because it only works as long as you rotate it on one axis. If you rotate it on two axes, it, uh, wait, let me, let me demonstrate it better. So. If you rotate on one axis, 
it's kind of fine. You see the bending ones are rotating the rotation, the are following the rotation of my control, but then I rotate it on this axis, and the bending ones are doing something totally random. So, anyways, that's the don't reverse engineer rain. Uh, check out the sprite fright rigs. Um, they only have bendy bones on the eyelids and the lips, but uh, that's all you need. And you don't need to reverse engineer it anyways, you can just download Cloud Rig. And um, look, I want to keep playing around, I'll just do it here. Um, we, we stay on this tangent for a bit, why not? I'm tired of looking at snow, let's take a short break and do something else for no particular good reason. Uh, where is it? Cloud chain, 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 cloud chain. Look, you install Cloud Rig, you make a cloud chain, and you take this checkbox, which is already ticked, smooth spline. You press the generate button, which I have on a shortcut, and look what you get. Wait a minute. Let me change the segments to one. And look what you get. Bam, bam. This thing is doing the thing, right? And bam. You can rotate it, and it works fine, and it works on as many rotation axes as you want, um, and it is much simpler. Look, this is all that's going on. And by the way, uh, this was so. I think this was who the hist like I'm trying to credit who came up with this. I would say credit goes to myself, Juan Pablo, and Alexander Gavrilov, and uh, most Alexander, because he actually implemented the necessary features into Blender's nightmare C constraint code. Um, so yeah, here's the here's the magic. You have this oh no it's wait local space on the orientation. Oh that's the one then. And uh, you know I'm not gonna go into more detail but there you go. You can have smooth chains that you can still control. That's all there is to it. That's all that Rain's mess tried to achieve and did poorly. So there you go. <laughs> More bones on the cheek than hair on my head. Hell yeah. So you only have these two bone chains for sliding eyelids. What about keeping curvature around the eyeball? Very good question, actually. Does Rain have that tech? Maybe not. Um, let me <laughs> let me get rid of all this mess. Uh, so what I would do nowadays. Rain does not have that tech, but Ellie does. What I would do nowadays, at l uh, one of the ways that I would do it nowadays, uh, keeping the eyelids on top of the eyeballs, is with shrink wrap modifier, which is apparently not this one, or it's not helping, or it's not necessary. Um, yeah, because Ellie's eyes are so big that uh, in this case I don't, I don't have to work very hard to keep the eyelids on top of the eye. Uh, but yeah, shrink wrap. Why not? You know, um, that just does exactly what it, what what you need. It 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 um, keeps the mesh on top of. Maybe not necessarily the eyeball directly, but uh, it could be a helper mesh. It could be the eyeball directly if you want. Um, but yeah, uh, probably helper mesh. You're better off. Uh, <coughs> I need to drink again. Holy moly. Hmm. Ah, thank you again, Julian. All right, let's get back to snow. How long was the tension? 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Uh, let's save, by the way, before we crash. Um, okay, more little blue lines. Um, it feels silly to be spending so much effort on what is just silly blue lines, but I don't know. This is how I always did it. And especially because this layout is going to be a different, a slightly different approach than what I'm used to. I guess it's best to plan out and think about it. So these bones, they don't have a lot to do. So I'm not too worried about getting this wrong. And like, so there's a bunch of vertices here that I'm not going to have too much control over. And I think I'm okay with that. I mean, these two will move quite a bit, but not that much, so I'm okay with leaving this kind of empty. Um, same thing here. 
just have one here and have one here even though they will never move well this guy will move and the eyebrow will goes up and down but uh yeah yeah this guy's actually kind of important so it's fine this guy's gonna be totally useless but it's fine as well okay forehead uh forehead's probably easy we just put bones everywhere nah kind of um but we do want these bones to be in line with the eyebrows of course because we need the vertices to get out of the way when the eyebrows are raised up um so just one there one there one there one there which is quite close to this one but i think i'm fine with that yeah and the one here hmm So I'm currently trying to decide between leaving two vertices between the bones or one vertex between the bones. Normally I would leave two. On rain I think I left even more because I was relying on the bendy bone to do a lot of work for me. Uh, now I just left two vertices between the bone and this bone is in kind of a random place. Um, but yeah, I think for snow I will just leave one. Because more bones, better. Yeah. Okay, but then for the top of the eyebrow, there's really no need. So, we leave two there. Okay, I think that's going to be our deform layout. I suppose. The ears just gonna be like me, 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 me. Just gonna be a bendy bone loop. That's it. The ears are easy. Okay. Let's get to it. My fingers are kind of cold. I have a heater here, but if I turn it on, I think it's gonna be kind of noisy. But I mean, me. Mm. Get a. 21.8 degrees Celsius. That should not be this cold. Hmm. Need to get some blood pumping, guys. Oh. 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 All right, everyone. 162 people. That was the last time that you stood up from your chair and moved oh. around a bit. Huh? Do it. Do it now. No excuses. <sighs> okay, I mean, that wasn't much. It won't hurt you if you do a bit more than me. Okay. But I have a chat to read. Oh my god, there's two people in the chat who tried to reverse engineer rain. I am so sorry, guys. A bunch of tracking constraints just to keep orientation. If it's to be like the rain rig, then I think he later connect the joints to the base of the eyeball bones so when they rotate, they naturally curve around the eye. Uh, yeah, I might do that, actually. Uh, yeah, for the sprites, that wasn't so necessary because the eyes were so big that the surface actually ended up being quite flat or well yeah the eyes were necessarily always big but they were quite flat mm, the faces in general were quite flat as you could see when I <laughs> switched from rain to Ellie I mean okay maybe you probably didn't feel it because you're not watching super actively but man it felt like switching from a statue to a to a volleyball I don't know why a volleyball instead of any other ball, but there you go. The sprite fright faces were super smooth and spherical. Um, so yeah, they didn't need the helper um, eyelid rotation stuff. But I will probably have it here, why not? Oh, my chat just jumped away. Oh my god, I hate when it does this. It doesn't do it on my computer, only here on the streaming computer.
Lots of deformation bones are good. Lots of control bones bad. Exactly, exactly. So we're going for lots of deformation bones here. So wait, I just realized the new bandy was in 3.0. Should make this setup way simpler too. Uh, yeah, that might be true as well. And you can do more stuff with the new bandy bone features, which I haven't tried yet. I mean, I tested that patch when it was in development. Um, but I don't know. Like, you can do a lot more stuff with bandy bone scaling. And for the faces, I, I don't think you scale the deformation stuff that often. Like, you don't scale the lips up that often. Unless the character gets a bee sting or something. Is rain downloadable with the rig? Yes, of course. Uh, you can just Google for rain rig and you should find it. It's free. I've spent so much time just staring at rain's face rig. Me too. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Is this rig not too heavy to be played back in real time? Nah, man. Bones and constraints are not usually that much of an issue. It's vertices. Like, uh, it's it's much easier to stack up vertices than bones to the point where it becomes a performance problem. Uh, shape keys also. If I think shape keys, again, it's vertices and it's not optimized at all, so they can be slow as well. Is this character sculpted or modeled? Um, both, probably, I guess. Uh, I think I think Julian's workflow is to sculpt it first and then read the point. Yes, and he did that on live stream. So if you want to see how this character was created, you can check on the channel. I think at least the entire read the process, maybe not the entire sculpting process. Not too sure. Hard to put into words, but constraints now have a new space selection that looks very handy. Yeah, exactly. I don't know how the um, how constraint spaces work at all. But I click around, and sometimes I get exactly what I want. And now there's some new options, which again I can't put into words, either. But uh, they do things that are good. <laughs> it keeps offset from the target bone and copies rotation into its own space. I understood some of those words. And now no more damn tracks needed because new people and options. Is that true though? Maybe. People being excited about 3.0, hell yeah. I was playing uh, with the asset browser at home on some hobby projects. Not to mention that every one of those controller bones has an action constraint. <laughs> one action constraint? <laughs> you mean like 10? Uh, but that stuff was also automated always. So even on, actually, yeah. I totally forgot about that until you just mentioned it, but the actions on Rain were completely automated think. Were they? Nah, they must have been. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's when I wrote uh, this constr this operator, which I don't apparently have. Oh, because I'm in edit mode. Bam. What? Animation data. Bam. Bam. That's when I wrote this operator to set up action constraint automatically. And then this operator turned into a this uh, rigify panel. Oh yeah, by the way, since last stream, I did do some tweaking on Snow's bod rig because uh, Pablo and Rick already started animating um, him, or maybe just Pablo and Rick just tested stuff. Um, but yeah, he has like a finger thing now, which is uh, uh, which I did just yesterday. Um, this is action based, um, so it's kind of simple. So this is the setup. Just it's just all one action with different ranges. Anyways, um, yeah, finger stuff. That's oh, and the new spine. Yeah, that's that's kind of important. But um, that was all just coding, not really rigging. Um, yeah, where was I? Catching up with chat. <laughs> Looks like my first animation movie will be a rabbit hole of time. I suppose that is one way to put it. Um, I advise to keep it under 20 seconds. Way under 20 seconds if you can. If 
you weren't using b bones would you do that with a stretch to constraint right uh yeah yeah that's true like uh sometimes i mistakenly say that i mistake i misattributes squashing to bendy bones but of course bendy bones don't really have anything to do with squashing that's just a stretch to constraint you're totally correct about that is the ikfk stretch enough of rain's spine that is so confusing to me <laughs> yes me too <laughs> that's the other man. man i don't know how i made rain she's such a like her rig is such a nightmare under the hood at least um and again that spine um was inspired heavily by blendrig's spine um so that setup is mostly i would say to juan pablo's credit i just made it procedural in cloudrig um, but also, our animators didn't actually like it that much, or they didn't dislike it in the sense that they would complain about it, but they didn't really use the the IK ness of the spine. So what you could do with the old spine was just drag this bone down and have this follow, and they did not use that. Um, and this is what they seem to have wanted instead. So where you, if you push it up, the old spine would uh, kind of collapse in on itself. Um, which was a side effect of of the other feature. So I think that was kind of the goal, and the squashy, the lack of squashing was a side effect. And now I made this other spine setup, which again is is a big mess, and I wouldn't know where to start other than there is a bone in there somewhere that squashes. Um, so yeah, now it's a more of a harmonica. No, not harmonica. What is this thing called? Um, crap. Well, you know what I mean. The blah, 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 that kind of thing. Uh huh. Yep, English. Uh, more comments. Shrink wrap. Fair enough. Yes. Uh, holy moly! Am I that far behind? This is like, this is like half hour old comments that I'm reading. Am I just? <laughs> it's five p.m. How long have I been? I've been on for like an hour and forty-five minutes. I haven't done anything so far. Holy moly! Um. Drivers better at the node ring than mine or small scripts. Yeah, I wish we had uh, node based drivers, that would be cool. Like editing drivers is, if you think about it, it's pretty, pretty 90s, the interface for it. I mean, um, just before 2.8, we didn't even have the right click edit driver thing. We had to go in a separate editor. And then just the frigging end panel of that editor. Nightmare. It's very easy to weight pain in Blender, it's easy to create custom shape control, and it's easier to make balloon shape. Oh, uh, software wars, whatever. And my chat just jumped again. <laughs> Been standing up for 10 minutes. Good. Good job. Uh, yeah, some people did their exercise, it's good. Is there a keep offset for copy transforms now? I'm not sure. I feel like there was a patch for that, right? Hmm, it's not there. <laughs> I wish if I had a reference with character picker thing is we rig so we could align the facial bones. Well, it, it it's really hard for me to rig facial bones. It's hard for everyone. I don't know if that would help. I just like to go in 3D and um, I just have my view um, clip start very low so I can zoom in really close and place things very precisely like I was doing with the with the eyelids like I just zoom in like all the way like this and place it are there plans to change blenders linking system for rigs it always seemed quite complicated well I don't think it's going to become less complicated but uh, with the library overrides at least it's more reliable and more performant and stuff, but it is still complicated, I guess. I mean, it's not super <gasps> accordion. That's the one. Yes, thank you. I don't think linking is that complicated. You just link a collection, then you press make library override, and then you start animating. How good is Autorig Pro compared to make Rigify? I haven't tried Autorig Pro. I'm sorry. Uh, from what I've seen, it seems like it's super um, noob friendly because, like, uh, they have this marketing gif where you can just you know drag and drop some dots on a on an arbitrary character and it will figure out where to put the bones i wonder how well that actually works 
But if that works well, then that's pretty it's pretty insane. Uh, as far as rigging a lot of characters quickly goes, or rigging a single character very easily. So yeah, I'm sure Autorig Pro is very nice. Could you please talk louder? Am I not loud enough? Let me check my levels in OBS. Hmm. Testing, testing, testing. Yeah, I guess I could amp it up a bit. Testing, 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 testing. Testing. Okay, I'm in. Oh, now I'm now I'm in the red. Testing, 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 testing. Uh, I have no idea if I landed on. Yeah, I think I landed a bit louder than before. But then again, aren't you sick of my voice already? I I don't seem to shut up today. It's important to consider what the animators actually want and use when they animate. Exactly. Uh, how did you learn all this shit? <laughs> I don't know, man. I started with simple goals. I was lucky in that sense. You know? So yeah, do that probably. Start with simple goals. <laughs> I hope I didn't blow out anyone's ears while I was playing with the audio. You guys should, should uh, you guys should have told me earlier. All right, back to rigging. Let's play some bones. By the way, question. <laughs> so much for back to rigging. How long am I going to stream? I will contemplate that while I play spawns. How about that? Efficiency. Um, did I already assign correct properties to this stuff? No, I didn't. I will assign cloud underscore copy, enable the form, and leave everything else as it is, and duplicate this and start down here. So it is currently 5 p.m. I think I will go... I will try within the next hour to place all of these bones, name them, and assign automatic weights. How about that? And then we stop. And if it takes an hour and a half, then we'll go for an hour and a half. If it takes two hours, then I'm going home. <laughs> Maybe I'll leave the naming last, because that's the most boring thing ever. <laughs> Uh, there, there will be one more step, actu step actually, which is adjusting the bone rolls and stuff. And I think maybe I won't even do like super precise locations for them right now, because again, not all that important, I suppose. I don't know why I just messed with the size. I shouldn't do that. Let's try to keep a consistent size for every single bone. And then even if you want to change them, we can change them all together later. <laughs> so yeah, I will just worry about nothing but getting some bones in some places. Later I will worry about their orientation, their name, their constraints, etc. And they're parenting. They should all be parented to the head. Right now they are not. Oh, and they'll have to be symmetrized at some point as well. Um, something I just kind of realized is they don't have a dot .l at the end, which I want to have there, just so I don't have to type it every time once I clean up the names. By the way, I hate naming bones. At least, like, bones that no one's ever going to see. I mean, I hate not doing it even more. I don't want to have a rig that's made up of nose bridge to the L zero zero fives all over the place. But um, coming up with names that aren't nonsense for these super arbitrary areas is an exercise in patience, for sure. So yeah, by the way, I'm just, uh, the workflow here is shift D to duplicate, click to set the cursor, 
um, Shift S to use the cursor snapping pie menu to snap selection to cursor, which I can't even show you because it disappears. There you go. Uh, Shift S, and then I have the cursor pie menu. I think this is I think this is not built in. I think this is from well, it's from the built-in pie menu add-on. It's one of the the pie menus from there, and then I just uh, Z wireframe and move the bone a little bit inside of the skin, just because why not. Um, so yeah, that's what we do. And yeah, maybe I could have done this uh, when I was figuring out where to put them in the first place. But I don't know. I like the blue lines. They are... They feel more... Non-permanent, I don't know. <laughs> It's an esoteric reason, okay? It's more s the rigging is a very spiritual exercise, guys. It's not science. It's more like praying. Why move the bones a bit inside the skin? Yeah, I guess I should try to justify it. Why do I do that? It's a really good question. <laughs> you know... Why do we do anything? <laughs> I mean... I will say this. It's for rotation. Because for translation and scale it doesn't matter. So, I guess when I rotate the thing, I want it to pivot from a little bit inside the skin. I don't know. It's kind of pointless, isn't it? Should I just stop doing it? That's how I always did it. <laughs> That's the reason. I always moved it one millimeter inside the skin, hide the ball inside the skin, so it pivots from just inside. Ah, tell you what, tell you what, tell you what. It's because of subdivision surface. Because that's gonna reduce the silhouette of the mesh by just that much. Uh-huh, that's definitely the reason. That is somehow relevant. Yep, that's totally it. How dare you question me? <laughs> Exciting bone placement. Could also probably be faster with two windows. Maybe we should try that. Okay. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. But then again, I should do a lot of things. I should read a book. I should watch Loki. I should learn to code C. Should play uh, Kina. And yet, all I do is Shift D, click Shift S with the camera, pointlessly shift the bone inside the mesh for literally no reason.
asking why do you delete the default cube, cube just to add a new cube? <laughs> exactly. Why do we do anything? We're all gonna freaking disappear at the heat death of the universe, so why bother? And the correct reply to that is why not? Because it's fun. It's fun to shift the bones two millimeter inside the mesh for no reason. Okay. Right, then all we have to do is the ear, which I will grab this guy, although I actually don't want the face chain, but the cloud chain, even though it wouldn't really make a difference in this case. But hey. And we will also need a, an ear root bone, which we will take care of in a sec. Uh, where should this be actually? So something I do want for the ear is like a this little teddy ear control, which again, nobody will ever use this, right? But, oh, this is actually kind of misbehaving. Yeah, why is it pulling out the inside of the ear like that? Because it's twisting. What? Huh. <laughs> okay. I shouldn't have shouldn't get sidetracked here, but Ellie's ears are not behaving. Why? Oh, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. So this is a cloud chain with smooth spline, and then there's this thing which has an armature constraint. Huh. Which goes on to this one. And it doesn't inherit the twist. That's not good. Hmm. Oh, but this is some super old version of Ellie. What? Okay, I'm sure this is fixed, but I'll I'll check it later. Because yes, this was a problem a bunch of times. Um, on the on the chain rig, um, I'm sure this is an old version, and that's why this is broken. Okay, so back to a thought that I was about to start like seven minutes ago. I want this control, this teddy ear control. It's useless, but it's kind of cute. And again, it's fun. You could automate that by placing a bone copy on each first vertex of every annotation line. Huh. I haven't considered that. That's kinda that's kinda cool. I should do that. Doesn't auto weight properly if they're outside. Ah, see? That might actually be the real reason. I think I just like I've been doing it for so long that I think I forgot why I do it. Maybe that is the reason. That sounds like a thing. You know? Is that Miles Morales? Nah. How 
power you're gonna control all of these bones with actions I don't think I will get to today um, but next time maybe tomorrow but I don't want to promise such things Today's Thursday, right? Yeah. So I do want to get this face rig done uh, sooner rather than later. Like next, early next week, it should be kind of testable, at least some parts of it, like at least it should be able to blink and um, open his mouth, maybe not smile, because smiling is kind of hard. Um, so yeah. I don't know where the thought started and what I was trying to say, but uh, I think I was trying to figure out my timeline for this. Hmm, this is fine. Okay, and then we'll one here make it a root dash ear dot l and then this is ear one dot l now that I have the type I'm realizing that my fingers are pretty cold again oh god this keyboard is kind of flimsy oh no it's my fingers holy moly they are frozen but this thing says 22.4 there's no way there is no way that it is 22.4 degrees in this room not in a million years. Mm. <sighs> Need to pump some blood, man. Okay. All right, we have bones, guys. But if I'm gonna symmetrize them over, then I should name them. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, look, I missed one. <laughs> oh, and I didn't place this even properly at all. So now that we're done with the super exciting placing a bunch of bones, let's amp it up a notch. Is that a thing you say? I don't think so. By doing some super exciting renaming of bones for the next 35 minutes. So I'm gonna hide what's done. And we're gonna come up with awesome, super descriptive sense making names for everyone else. What is this guy? Deep top corner. Oh. Well, then you should be there, my guy. Yes. Okay, hide all this stuff. So, this is clearly a bone that is uh, below the lip. So it's a uh, lip uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, below. <laughs> God damn it. I hate this. <laughs> we look at other things. We look at Ellie. Oh my God, she's just a ball. <laughs> a bridge chin, outer lip lower. Yes, outer lip, we can go with that, yes? It is outside of the lip. Yes, perfect. Outer lip, lower center. Ooh, typing is really not as fast as I'm used to. Oh boy. 
and then this is a uh, chin. <laughs> Something. It's a chin ring. It's a chin that that's no that sounds like a piercing. It's a chin top. It's the it's the top of the chin. <laughs> Um, hmm. This is this is obviously the chin main, guys. I mean, look at it. And then this is of course the chin the L. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm yep. So then we can. This can be the outer lip lower. That L. Lower two, that L, right? We have lower one and lower two. Yes, that's fair. So the lip numbering goes from outward in. Then I guess this should also go from outward in. That's the reasoning. This is of course a lip outer corner dot L. That makes sense, right? Well, outer lip, not lip underscore outer. Isn't this just the best thing ever? The ears don't have bones. <laughs> you fucking got me there. I need to watch this from the beginning when I'm free. I think you are quite fine just skipping through it, to be honest with you. Because I, oh boy, we got a spammer. We get rid of that one. Oh, no, not that button, the, the, the banhammer button, that's the one. Um, the chin top has no dot L. Should it? No, no, this is, this is in the center, look. That's fine. That looks like fun. It's not. Beautiful animation was the hard part. Nah, dude, animation is so easy. Dude, if Pablo can animate, anyone can animate. Come on. Have you seen this Rick guy yesterday? Clueless. And yet, he can still wrangle the anim tools. Animation, easy. Those guys can do it, you guys can do it. Okay, we have chin something. Chin chin. Chin jaw. You know, because it's the bottom of the chin, which is also the front of the jaw. Um, or it could be the chin base. And here's the best part about this decision. It doesn't matter. None of this matters. It's all pointless. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do this easy. Jaw one dot L. Oh, but this is still the chin, you see? So now we have chin base dot L. Brilliant. Now we will live a better life. Now this is a jaw, obviously. Jaw one dot L. Jaw two dot L. Jaw three dot L. Now this part is this part I like. Now we're making progress. Brilliant. This is chin dot L. Even though clearly if you search the rig for chin dot L, you would probably expect something that controls this whole thing. And this almost does that. Almost. And wow, still, whenever I try to draw something, like the mouse sensitivity feels so insane. But hey, whatever, not my computer. Uh, what is this? This is something like this, chin top. Sure, chin top dot L. That makes kind of sense, right? Uh oh. What is this ball called, guys? It's, 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 it's a 
chin it's a chin jaw it's a chin jaw bridge top lip bottom upper bridge center between under I know you're not doing eyes right at the moment, but do you think you could show the eye rig later? I'm struggling to rig that area on a character right now and could use the advice. Uh, yeah, I'll probably um, get around to that tomorrow. And like, so once I, I think the eyes is gonna be one of the earlier things that I rig. So like right now the character's face is not deforming at all. So there's nothing to show. Um, but yeah, I think tomorrow I'll try to stream, no promises. Um, and then we'll do we'll do we we'll do the eye we'll do the eyelids and uh, figure out how to do it uh, i think actually the, the way i do eyelids i really like so i'm happy to show that and uh, give some tips because that's like the one thing that i'm kind of confident about even though <laughs> even though if you look at some of the rigs and you torture them enough then they can be a bit unsatisfactory, but still. For bone-based eyes, they're pretty good. Mind you, if you just want to have an easy way out, just make two ship keys with the eyelids halfway closed and then the eyes and then the eyelids um, with the previous ship key activated fully closed. And then you just blend those two ship keys and you have a blink, you know? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh, holy moly, I don't know what to name this bone. Uh chin outer dot L. We're out of here. Um, <laughs> this is somehow the original nose bridge to the L. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember that. That's when I remember to put the suffix on there. But this is actually... I don't know. Jaw bridge one dot L. Yeah? It's a jaw and it's, uh, it's bridging to something that is not the jaw anymore. Yeah? Genius. I don't know. This is outer lip lower. This is outer outer lip. We keep it. Okay, these are going to be cheek. Um, these are going to be lots of cheek. Like uh, it's going to be cheek one, one two, one three, one four. Yeah, like that. So cheek one one dot l. Then cheek one two dot l. Cheek one three dot l. This is not the cheek anymore. See if I care. Cheek two one the L. Cheek two two the L. Cheek two three dot L. Cheek two four dot L. Cheek three oops three dot L. I mean whatever. Whatever I wrote, not what I said. Jesus, this shift key is... Or my fingers. Ah! Putting bones and doing the hard and boring part. Exactly. That is exactly what I'm doing. I thought I was too late at 21. Wish I started at 14. I had the great fortune of starting young and to be honest it's pretty good but it's never too late come on just gotta make a timetable for it and assign time If you feel like you require a lot of patience to do something, just devise a way where you don't require patience anymore. You know, like come up with a way where you can fool your brain into pumping dopamine into your into your face uh, on a regular basis. Um, but maybe not with um, you know drugs. Um, I meant more like set easy goals that you know you will reach within a short time span and then you can feel happy hey i achieved this thing that i wanted to achieve 
And then you just don't think about the fact that actually achieving that thing that you set as a goal was <laughs> super easy. You don't think about that part. You try not to think about that part as much as you can. And then your brain will believe it. And your brain is going to be like, wow, I'm so proud of myself. And then you do it again. And this is outer lip top one. Let's check. So this was outer lip lower one. Uh, why lower? Why not bot? I think it should be bot. Plop, plop, plop. We will fix it. And you know why we will fix it? Why this name is so important to be bot instead of lower? Let me know. I don't. But yeah, top. And I didn't even check the number. Uh, this is one, yes. And then this is two. Okay. So this is two. And then this is what? Wait, what? Oh no. Uh, right. Something has gone terribly wrong. So because of my many bones target, I decided apparently to put a bone up here, which seems useful to be honest, so I don't want to change that. But it makes me question if I shouldn't do the same at the bottom then. So you see how this bone exists between this one and this one? I feel like having one here not necessarily be a crime because I just need so much control over this li lip corner when this guy starts smiling and frowning all over the place nah nah this is fine this is enough but the naming is now wrong so this name belongs to this bone and then this belongs to this and then for this one we'll come up with something else ah, frick. <laughs> we'll just we'll just do the satanic thing and do it to the top zero already nostril lower, nostril upper, that's good. Um, nostril outer dot L. Because it's vaguely near the nostril and we need a bone name, so that's what it is now. It's gonna be nose bridge one dot L maybe. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Nose bridge two dot L. Nose bridge three dot L. This of course eyebrows. Those are fine as they are. Foreheads. This should be also easy. Forehead one one dot L. Which direction do we go? Uh, upwards, I think. Yeah. Forehead one two dot L. Forehead one three dot L. Wow, this is so much fun, guys. Are you all enjoying the stream? Oops. Wait. Yes, yeah, that's correct. I should work on my singing, then I could actually entertain you guys while I'm doing this sh shoot. Wait, what? I can swear, it's fine. But I'm sure there's people watching who would rather that I didn't. is fine. Now, is this still a forehead? Well, no. It's a temple. But, I mean, look. Look at this dude. His whole body is a temple. Am I gonna name every bone temple then? No. 
but I will name these ones. Don't remember Rainrig having ear controls. I think she did. <gasps> she did not. Oh my god. Oh my goodness, she has no ears at all. I mean, this is this is not this is not functional at all. Huh. Huh. Lazier times back then. <laughs> well, now I do ears. I mean, they're still useless, but <laughs> now I do them. Okay. So these are all done. I'm gonna read some chat after hiding these to celebrate my progress. All right, let's see. Some other spammer for some reason. Sorry for my English you use on this rigging the philosophy of the art of moving points. Uh, no, I don't own that um, thing by Hippodrome. I think it's quite old. I've seen some videos from it and it felt super abstract. I didn't know how to apply that um, knowledge from the art of moving points. So not really. And also I think that's really for authoring shape keys like yeah, I don't know. I'm just forming my opinion of this as I'm speaking, so take it with a grain of salt. But from what I remember, from seeing, from the art of moving points, it was very abstract knowledge that I... Yeah, I have no idea how to apply it. It was just like, look at these points. Look how beautiful they are when I make them pretty. Now you do it. And I mean, yeah, <laughs> just throw the rest of the fucking owl. Some people say nodes are damn easy, but from my experience, they are not easy. Uh, you get you, nodes are an acquired taste. I had the luxury of picking up nodes in a way that was super fun. Um, not Blender's nodes, but um, way back in college, maybe even before college, like Unreal Engine nodes. Actually, maybe I did cycles shading before college huh god knows i grew up with nodes basically so i can't comment on that oh but i did coding before nodes so i'm my opinion is invalid i think in the first place i'm a maya rigger and i want to start in blender you can drive that bone with blend shapes mm, not sure i mean you can drive shape keys with bones that's for sure that's fine but to drive a bone with shape keys, I would only do that if that bone in turn controls a lattice, because then the order of deformations might still make sense, I guess. Dumb question, but why does coming all the time keyboard noises doesn't work with the mouse? I guess the mouse is just quiet. Uh, and I, I like, I, I know I have a tendency to, to smash the keyboard really hard. Mm, and my chat just jumped away. By the way, this is why sometimes I answer questions super out of order, because my chat jumps away, and then I scroll back, and then I notice that I missed some questions. Oh boy. Uh, it also doesn't help when you guys spam the same message a million times. Please don't do that. Dumb question, but why does, yeah, keyboard noises, yes. Um, why, why are you using bendy bones? I'm not yet, but when I will, because they're bendy. You want to rig bendy things with bendy bones. Why not? 
but for a lot of the face I won't be using it because whether faces are bendy or not is kind of subjective I guess how to work with two blender windows you can just uh, split a window with the shift dragging the corner like that which is pretty arcane I think there's also a better way to do it you can right click nope I have no idea how you do it without this but um, yeah shift drag splits a window there you go there's also window I'm almost certain that on windows there is a duplicate window here oh new window new main window yeah I don't know what those buttons do but it's probably what you want do you consider having chat at you so it's easier to find questions uh, I mean yeah feel free to you you have a higher chance to be noticed and uh, that I don't miss you yeah, feel free to ping at blender studio if you have a question um, as long as you don't spam it and stuff you know of course like this guy <laughs> when is the banhammer coming like there we go jeez YouTube is so slow to respond to my input anyways back to naming fun see this come on <laughs> <laughs> sorry yes hey Mike if you're still here drop something in the chat okay now these are outer eyelid bones. Um, the numbering is going to be a bit back again, though, because we have three at the top, four at the bottom, which was a deliberate decision. But maybe it would make sense to have four at the top, uh, would it? Nah, this is fine. So eyelid outer one dot L. Wait, lower. Eyelid lower outer one dot L. Two, three, four. And you know, the main point of Cloud Rig is to have you not have to do this sort of stuff of you know duplicating and naming bones and stuff but how do you do that for a face is something I never came up with a decent solution for because I mean you've seen me you know placing these individual bones like no other character is gonna have that same layout of bones so yeah I just uh, still do this stuff manually I don't think it's possible to automate. But maybe it is. Maybe someone just needs to be smarter than me. Why am I doing lower and upper when when my convention for this rig was supposed to be top and bottom? We will fix it. We will fix it in post with patch rename. That's what we're gonna do. Unless I forget, which I probably will. Okay, and this is eyelid outer. Corner. But L. There we go. And then this is um, I don't know. We'll 
go with eye ring because whatever is it two words uh, an eye ring is not a word Temple, sure. Tap. Three, one, three, two. Bam. I think we're done. And then we do the better name from upper. Top. That was surprisingly slow. And from lower to bot. Because they're shorter. And shorter bond names are better for the graph editor and the animation editors. <sighs> Alright. Um, some of these bonds don't have the cloud copy type assigned yet, so let me do that by hiding the ones that I don't want to apply it to which is all the lips and stuff, and also these guys. Yeah. Mm. Okay, and then... Hide the eye as well. And then we reify copy type and parameters to 81 bones, sheesh. All right, and now... The time has come to symmetrize. Oops, didn't parent stuff to the head. Hmm. I'll do. I mean, I can do it later as well, but you know. Uh, I also want to make a selection set out of this stuff, actually, or a bunch of selection sets, even. Um, because I'm probably going to need to select sets of these bones. <laughs> So might as well. I really should have done this the other way around, whatever. Ugh, what am I doing? Right, so these bones I want to put into a selection set called face cloud copy. And I want all of those to be parented to the head. Like that. This guy should be parented to the ear root. And the eyelids also parented to the head. All right. And now we symmetrize. And you know, maybe it wouldn't hurt to at least slap a consistent bone roll on these. Not that one. That one. That one. So the local positive axis is bending forward, which is a totally arbitrary decision, but now, let's save before we crash. Um, a console would be nice, but I don't know which one it is. This one. And now it's gone. Uh, and generate the rig, which is not doing anything. 
This is the correct console. What was this then? Hmm, whatever. Let's read chat while this is thinking for 15 seconds about nothing. Speaking of Arcane, do you know what the Fortiche production pipeline is like? What tools do they use? Dude, I frigging wish I am scouring the internet every day for behind the scenes, but they haven't shown anything so far, as far as I know. Am I from Russia? No, I'm from Hungary. What would, what should this be at the end of a short film? End of? What do you mean? Oh, you mean what should this character be in the end? Um, uh, yeah, we will make like a very, 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 very short film. I wouldn't call it a short film. We will have like a, uh, maybe it's a spoiler, um, but there will be, so everything that we've done with Rain, we want to do with this character, maybe a bit better and uh, bigger and cooler. So uh, some test animations basically, and then we release the rig for people to play with. Arkane's technique of shading should probably be called cell shading. I don't know if, if they use cell shading, to be honest with you. I know when to stop to put controls, bonds in the forms in the rigging for production. Uh, <laughs> that's a really good question, because that's exactly what I'm trying to figure out here. When how, how do you know when you have enough bones or not? So as I mentioned earlier in the stream, my goal for this rig was to put more deformation controls than I usually do, because in the past, in my experience, I would put a bit too little and I would make my job a bit harder than it had to be. So now I'm trying to put quite a lot. And hey, we generated a rig. Um, let's see if things move with the head. Uh, the lips don't. The rest does, that's good. Okay, so we just need to parent all of this stuff to the head as well. And I forgot to assign bone shapes for these guys, which is just going to be a ton of cubes <laughs> for now. Uh, a bit smaller than this, honestly, would be ideal. Yeah, that's better. And then let's generate again. And back to the chat. Can I see what you've done so far? Uh, not much, honestly. Yeah, most of it is on screen here. We placed a ton of bones strategically, which took ages, unfortunately. Um, but I don't think it can be done that much faster if you really want to place them in the right places. Like I think if I rush it, then I'm gonna have a bunch of bones in awkward spots um, and not controlling from the right places to get the right deformations. Anyways, so we placed a bunch of bones. It was super exciting. We moved them all one millimeter inside the mesh for good reasons. And then we named them all. That's what we've done in the last two hours. Three, holy fuck. <laughs> two hours, 43 minutes. That's what we've done. It's It sounds really silly when you see how little we've achieved in that time, especially when you compare it to Rick's animation yesterday that he did in three hours. But alas, I would say this is normal for actually trying hard to make something good. Um, like I once rigged Sintel in three hours, but that was not good. I had to remove all her attachments, all her accessories, and uh, her face uh, was a big poodle, uh, not pu pudding. Her face was a big pudding of corrective smooth, um, which is not what we are trying to get here. So these things. They take time. Okay, so this anchor actually works. So if the rest of them don't... Oh! I might be a fool. Okay, so first of all, I think the bottom one is going to work if I actually put them in the correct spot. Yep. So, it's okay. So, I'm speaking nonsense right now. I'm aware. I will explain. So in Cloud Rig, I have a cloud face chain rig type, which I'm using for the lips here. 
The only way in which they differ from the cloud chain rig type is that they can be anchored. And that means that when multiple um, instances of that rig uh, meet in the same location in 3D space, um, they their controls will combine into one. So you can control the two ch chains with one control in that spot, which is the center of the lip here and the bottom of the lip. Uh, the center top of the lip and the bottom center of the lip. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> English. Um, so at the top, we've seen it working. At the bottom, it's going to work now because the only reason it didn't work is because they were not exactly in the same location. And I expected them to work not on the center as well, but that's because I'm a fool and I don't know my own system because the anchor stuff only works if multiple chains actually do meet. Otherwise, they don't, which is fine. I can achieve what I wanted in a different way. But I do wonder if um, if that's bad design and if I should change that. But that's not something I can do right now. So there you go. We have this guy, which now anchors those two uh, rig elements, and this guy, which now also works. Now these guys do not work. But we have these instead. I will make them work real quick because it only takes two seconds. So what I will do instead is uh, use constraint relinking. So I'm going to have a constraint on the meta rig. And I'm going to put, um, well, maybe I can, I think I can just do this, which is less confusing. So yeah, I'll just, let me, let me, let me do this. Um, copy this armature constraint, and then, oops, put the correct target for this one. And this one, and this one, is that correct? That is correct. And then resymmetrize this to mirror the constraints. And so now these constraints on the meta rig, they target the meta rig, but on the generated rig, these constraints will be moved to these uh, stretchy controls that are prefixed with SDR and they're going to target the generated rig instead of the meta rig. So I'm going to generate this again, and then we're going to do automatic weights, and then we will maybe do a little bit of cleanup so that like the bottom lip doesn't drag on the top lip and stuff like that. We'll try to maybe pause like a very rough smile. <laughs> Not even. We don't even have a jawbone yet, by the way. So that's future. Um, we'll try to post something and then I'm going to end the stream. Which version are you using? Limit 3 is very laggy and stuff. It shouldn't be. I'm on, uh, I'm always on latest master. The streams are always on latest master. So in this case, that means 3.1 alpha. Can't wait for rig nodes, rigify, become somewhat unnecessary. Try to make an add-on that would estimate to rig nodes, but it was way over my head. There is something like that. Um, and it might be useful if you don't already know Python. If you know Python, then I think it's easier to do that. And I don't know what it's called right now. It's just Blender rig nodes. It's very underground. Blender rig nodes, an overview. Is this that? Yeah, yeah. So if you just Google Blender rigging nodes, it's a thing. And I've seen some people do cool stuff with it. So I think it's actually it's actually pretty fleshed out um, of an add-on. Um, but f when I tried playing with it, I just felt like, man, I would rather just uh, keep doing what I'm already doing um, because I already have the, the framework for it in Python. And then in that case, writing the code feels faster. Um, Are you in Linux? Yes. The eyelids collapse is efficient in a rigging. Not sure I understand the question. Why 
by using cloud copy bonds? Shouldn't they be chain anchors? Um, no. So the reason I want to, well, by the way, chain anchor is actually, it's actually the same functionality <coughs> as a cloud copy. It just, uh, it just has special treatment by the cloud face chain. Um, but so, yeah, that's why. So because normally here you would have two controls for the left side of the lip and the right side of the lip, which I don't want. Um, and the reason for that is simply because I want to keep the metric symmetrical because then it's just easier to author. Um, but if it's symmetrical, that means you can't have a continuous chain all the way across because it's not um, like if it's, you know, if all of the directions are like this, then that's not symmetrical. Um, so I have two separate rigs for the left and the right. And then this guy will make sure that the center one is, is combined like this. Because otherwise, you have these guys, um, which are like, you know, you don't want to split up the <laughs> middle of the character's lips like this usually as an animator. So you want to have a combined thing for them. So I don't know what the question was, but I hope that answered it. Okay, and so now, by the way, um, these things, which again, they happen to be still chain anchors, but these could actually be now switched back to cloud copy and I need to grab a drink because I'm getting a dry throat again. So I can just copy Rigify type of parameters. I won't regenerate because it won't make any difference. But yeah, so these ones don't have to be anchors, only the center ones, because they have two um, chain rigs meeting in one place. Okay, so, Let's uh, do the auto magic weights and it's probably going to be a complete and utter disaster. <coughs> but hey, that's why we're here, right? On this planet to watch people suffer. Uh, so now you can watch me suffer. I think this is roughly the bones that we want. Mm. Hmm. Wait. Do the form bones have? Um. Something is wrong. Oh. Oh snap. Uh. Okay. Then I do need to regenerate. So not currently none of my face bones create the form bones because I forget that I changed something. Very easy fix, hold alt, click this. Now they will create the forms. S also, these are all on the wrong layer. Z, they should be on the face layer, uh, face secondary layer actually. And that should be it, I guess. I don't know why the eyes are here as well. Those should be in the face primary. And what else is on this layer? I don't see it. Oh, sure those can be there, whatever. Uh, they shouldn't be, but whatever. Okay. These are also on the wrong layers. Okay, let me do some organization cleanup here, because yeah, I, I did totally ignore assigning layers, to be fair. There you go, face, face secondary. It's gonna get a bit more detailed later, but for now it's fine. And regenerate. What level of Python is needed for a good rigger? <laughs> um, I don't know how to answer that. Um, the more, the better. More skill is more skill, um, I guess. Yeah, Python is definitely useful for rigging. Lots of repetitive tasks. And you can also end up uh, helping out with pipeline stuff if needed. So the face is not going to be a fully b-bone based face like rain. Uh, hopefully not. No, I want to go for a different approach this time. But if it turns out to be a disaster, it shouldn't. Duplicate rig took 53 seconds. <laughs> Something is so terribly wrong. <laughs> like, 
mind you, this rig generation thing, this should take uh, less than less than a second. I just haven't bothered fixing something that is incredibly wrong. It's probably to do with the it's probably to do with the chain anchor stuff. So it just took seventy four seconds to generate this rig, <laughs> when normally it should take. Uh, about oh no so it's it still happens even with any other rig not just this one that's very strange huh yeah i'll have to investigate performance stuff cuz something is horribly wrong right now in cloud rig but anyways it generates eventually so let's finally Select the right bones and press the button. Assign auto magic from bones and we hope for the best. Um, I'm assuming that's a Polish nie, maybe. But in Hungarian, we would write it differently. Oh, we automatic weights, nice. Um, let's normalize those, which I just did with Shift N. And then auto normalize, clean weights, multiplane, X mirror, flip group, uh, ta -da -ta -da -ta -da, all the way pin settings already set up from earlier. All right, the face didn't get much at the front, which is good. Because we want these guys here to do our heavy lifting and all other kinds of lifting. For example, uh, this slip should not expand all the way there, but this is not the kind of stuff I'm going to clean up right now. So, let's see. So in future, of course, when I move this bone down, this bone is also going to be affected, and this one probably not, but maybe. Uh, but for now, we have to move everything manually. So let's do it. Let's just like uh, open his lips just to see if um, to see if the bottom of the lips will drag any of the top along. And let me enable mirror posing, which I just did with Shift X, which is my own shortcut, so it's not going to work for you. Look at this. This is uh, looking pretty good. It's not uh, tearing itself apart, which is perfect. Ooh, that is a lot of influence holding, but Jesus. <laughs> but again, this is stuff we will clean up later. Not now. Stop. I need somebody next to me to slap on my wrist whenever I start going into pointless details that are not relevant yet. So look, I mean, hey, technically, you can just start animating this, you know? Uh, yeah, everything you need. Uh, uh, as long as you don't mind keyframing all of these bones to open a jaw. Let's see. Look at that. It's perfect. Uh, I don't need these ones. Oops. Oh, no. God damn it. Perfect. Flawless jaw opening action right there. This is uh, jaw droppingly good. See? Oops. Missed the part. Brilliant. Oh, the ears twisting. I don't know if that uh, is going to cause a problem. Let's see. So we will have this set up so that these three bones are partially parented to the ear root. So it's going to act something like this. It doesn't flip out, so I don't really care about this twist. I'll try to fix it, but it's going to be low priority. And then, of course, the weights here are uh, crazy. Maybe it is worth fixing that now. Nah, later, later. I think we are going to call it soon, because um, I'm pretty satisfied with this. You know what? Let's try. Let's try. Uh, 
big old smile. Huge. Bam. Alright, it's gonna be a bit more work than that. Because we're gonna need to move all of these out of the way. Uh, <laughs> okay, it's not, this is not actually the order that I wanna do this in. Maybe we move some of this first. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, wait a minute. Cheeks. Oh boy. This is, this is gonna be pretty extreme. But hey, that's what we're here for. Like, do you guys smile with your jaw? I sure do. My jaw definitely dislocates when I'm happy. Beautiful. Incredible. Now this is art. Now look at that. So good. God damn. I'm pretty impressed with myself sometimes, you know? Sheesh. So good. Why do other people even bother trying to be rigorous when I am on this planet? I mean, just look at these results. They speak for themselves. Beautiful. Well, I joke, but, 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 but look at this. Oh, fuck, we already had correct this with enabled. Oh, no. Damn it, I thought I could make it sound look way cooler with corrective smooth, but it's already it's already enabled. That's why it looks so good. Okay. Well, let's turn this off for future. Uh, let's marvel at our creation here. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> okay. Um it might take some more work. I mean even perfection can be improved. Um yeah, that definitely made sense. But, okay, look, here's the question. Is it actually good to have these two row of bones? And I feel like, yes. Because I can get them, get those vertices out of the way of each other this way super nicely. We, like and like I can rotate this without well, besides the automatic way it's going all over the place. I will be able to rotate this without messing up the bottom of the cheeks. Which I think will be important. The influence of this feels super awkward. And I don't think that's necessarily only the flaw of the weights right now. I think that might be a bone layout issue. Let me see. Let's throw down some keyframes real quick. So, bam, bam. So, yeah, even. Aha, see? See, because, because, because this and this are on a diagonal, kind of, from each other. I think that might be the reason. Totally. Like, if the influence of this guy started here, then this would unmess up the deformation, but it would also, like, affect the jaw. But again, of course, this is a very extreme... Okay, like, okay, okay, it's, it's clear. There's no need to explain. All the circumstances here are very odd and not necessarily a useful point of reference, but... I think it is interesting that it just feels like even after I clean stuff up, I have this intuition that this area is still not going to feel right. And because of the bone layout is what it is. So I want to either move this guy somewhere else, or add another bone, or both. But, um, 
I could also do that later. Try cleaning it up first, see what it's like, etc. But I feel like if I don't do it now, I'm not gonna bother later. So I am really eyeing moving it here. Or just adding an extra bond there. Do you think Blender is better than Maya for rigging? I haven't used Maya for rigging. I'm gonna end the stream after this and I might change my mind about this later but at the end of the day the point is that this can take some iteration and that may you find comfort in my uncertainty those of you who think so highly of me Yet now you see me just as clueless as you might be. Oh, and now it's going to generate for like 80 seconds for some reason. <laughs> okay, you guys uh, have seen all there is to see. I'm going to end it here. I'm going to wait for it to generate. Then I'm going to stop and get back to this. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe. Sorry that I don't have a proper schedule for streaming, but um, I just don't want to commit to it because it's something that, I don't know. Like, um, I think I have to kind of be in the mood is one thing. Another is nothing else has to come up because I, I if I stream, I only want to stream ringing snow so that there is some consistency. Uh, so if there's other stuff to do, yeah. Let's say this, if, um, if nothing else comes up tomorrow, then I'm gonna stream, unless somebody else is streaming. Yeah. So yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in and chatting. It was super fun. Um, wear your seat belts. Um, love with your heart. Use your head for everything else. What else? Um, do exercise. Drink water. Um, yeah. Bye. <laughs>